YouTube friends, I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead and I wanted to share with you a couple of the things I've been doing today. I was going around and getting everything done and I'm like, I can stop and turn the, the camera on really fast because one of the things that we did was we harvest our corn this morning and I just wanted to talk with you about corn for a moment. So most of us obviously know I went ahead and scraped all the kernels off. I'm going to do some raw pack pressure canning with, with the pints of corn. I've got 16 or 17 back there, I think. My boiling water's going. So that's going to happen in just a minute. And then I'm going to ferment a quart of the corn. And I'll do another video on this, maybe, if if I have the energy. <laughs> and, and then we're going to use the rest of the corn and do some grilling tonight. But these are all things you can do with corn. But I wanted to talk with you really fast about corn silk. So this is the corn silk that I saved from the corn. And you can use the corn silk dried in herbal teas or you can use it fresh. You can also powder it up and use it in capsules. And you're probably wondering, why would you wanna use corn silk as an herbal medicine? So let's go ahead and talk about that really fast. And then I'll show you how to make a corn silk tincture. So corn silk and corn itself even, and the husks even, have been used for medicine for centuries, thousands and thousands of years, all over the world where it has been grown. That would include Europe, that includes America, South America, China, Turkey, a, a lot of different places. It's had some really nice medicinal uses. Native Americans here in our country used it for herbal medicine as well. Corn is a species of grass, so it just helps to draw the, the bees and the pollinators to the corn. So we get the, those big, beautiful cobs of corn. So for us though, corn silk serves a lot of other purposes and it's just really a wonderful, easy herbal remedy to, to work with. If you're going to use corn silk from your fresh corn, if you don't, if you grow it and you don't spray it, go for it. If you are buying your corn and you're husking your corn, be sure it's organic and it has not been sprayed. That's very important because you don't want to be making a tincture with pesticides in it. Not a, not a good idea. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the main functions or benefits of using corn silk as herbal medicine. In traditional Chinese medicine and with the Native Americans, it's been used to help with prostate issues. It's been used for helping with malaria and symptoms of malaria. It's been wonderfully used as a heart supporting herb, which I love to hear this, and UTIs, urinary tract infections. In fact, this is one herb that is the number one of the number ones that I recommend for urinary tract infections or issues and also for pets. So dogs, dogs sometimes have urinary problems or incontinence, especially older dogs. Corn silk can be really wonderful for them too and it's safe. And that's another thing, corn silk is generally regarded as safe. There are a few contraindications and I will talk about those at the end. So if you're on medications or things like that, just listen to the end and I'll go through the rundown of who should not probably experiment with corn silk, but generally speaking, it's very, very safe. For the circulatory system, corn silk may help reduce blood pressure. And I have a feeling as an herbalist, this is because it is a diuretic and it helps you to pass urine and reduce fluids in the body. And that in turn can reduce blood pressure sometimes. So that's something to know about it. Other herbs can do the same thing like celery seed extract. And there are many, many others that can be helpful for that. Another thing I didn't mention this one is that corn silk is, has been recently studied and found to potentially help reduce blood sugar. This can be helpful if you are working on weight management or if you're pre-diabetic or insulin resistant. Look into corn silk, especially if you're not on medications, you might find some improvement. But a study on mice significantly showed that corn silk extract was really helpful for this. Another thing that corn silk might be helpful with is inflammation in the body. So if you're using other herbs for inflammation like turmeric or black pepper and things like that nature, ginger, for example, 
put a little corn silk in there too. It's not gonna hurt and it might just be helpful for your inflammation. Constituent wise, corn silk contains high levels of flavonoids, which are super helpful for us. Antioxidants, which help our body fight off the, the free radicals that are intent on oxidizing our cells. Magnesium, potassium, high, high levels of magnesium and potassium. And magnesium is actually necessary for over 300 processes in the body and most people are deficient in it. Just saying. So again, consider your corn silk. Now let's talk contraindications really fast. If you are on medications of any kind, you should talk to your doctor first. I am not a medical doctor. I am an herbalist and aromatherapist. And one of the things I always ask is, hey, are you on medications? And I have a big fancy book where I can look up herb drug interactions, which I don't have with me here at home. It's down in my office clinic, but you definitely wanna run this by your doctor if you're interested in kind of experimenting with corn silk supplementation. If you are pregnant, if you're nursing, of course you should definitely speak with your doctor first about corn silk. You know, you might want to use it short term if you have a urinary tract infection, but since it's a diuretic, I would say you probably should be really careful with that and stay away from it. That's my opinion, but be sure to talk to your doctor because I'm not a doctor. <laughs> and then the big one is, if you are on potassium supplements, and some of us are for different medical reasons, then you want to totally avoid corn silk. Just don't take it. It's not going to be a medicinal herb for you. And so there you go. That's the rundown to prepare the corn silk. Again, I can, I can lay this out and dry it. I've done that before and then tincture it or you can use it. It's really nice in herbal teas when it's dried. In fact, I am gonna dry some of this because I just have so much of it, but I'm going to tincture a good amount of it as well. And you can also powder up the dried corn silk and use it in capsule form. Powder is also really nice if you're wanting to use it for your pets, like I mentioned before, if you have a dog that's incontinent or something of that nature, then a little powder in their food can be potentially helpful. All right, so that is a little rundown on corn silk, and I am going to take my boiling water now and get it into my raw packs of corn and get them in the pressure canner, and I'm going to get this nice quart jar of kernels that I had too many kernels for the pressure canner. So I'm going to ferment these and make a delicious corn kernel ferment as well. All right. I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead. This video was all about, oh, I didn't show you how to make the tincture. <laughs> I'm sorry. Guess I should do that. Let's go. <laughs> I'm hearing the water boiling back there. So I'm like, okay, I think I need to get going. So what I like to do is this is fresh. I just actually took this off the corn cob and, and I can dry this a little bit if I wanted to and it would be fine, but I'm going to use a bit of a higher proof alcohol for it. So I'm not really too concerned about the water content or any moisture content in this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill my jar, my quart jar here about three fourths of the way full. And maybe, yeah, that's probably gonna be good right there. I'm gonna have a lot to dry, I can see, that's wonderful. And then I'm going to use a 151 proof alcohol and I'm going to fill it to within an inch of the top. And then I'm going to simply put a lid on it and put it in kind of a warm area and give it a good shake occasionally and let it tincture for four to six weeks. At that point, it will be done. If I don't need it, sometimes I let my herbs tincture, sometimes for years. <laughs> and it doesn't go bad, it doesn't hurt the, the herb at all or the tincture process. But that's all I do and that's it. So here's how you make the tincture. And then to take your corn silk tincture, an average adult amount to take would be three full droppers full if you have a, an amber glass bottle. The droppers are generally about 30 drops each. So that's about the height. Can you see that? It's about halfway up the dropper. And then you use three of those and that generally equals about a half a teaspoon. And that would be the dosage for an adult. And you would, could take this once to three times a day, depending on what it is you're trying to work with. And then for children, you would want to use Clark's rule or one of the dosing guidelines for kids with their weight. I would not use this with children under the age of like two or three. That's, I don't think 
little ones need this kind of an herbal preparation. <laughs> All right, so there you go. If you wanna get my free herbal remedy guide, go ahead and so you can look in the first comment down below. I'll have it pinned or in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this quick little kind of off the cuff video on corn silk. And I hope you'll definitely use your corn silk if you husk your corn and make some corn medicine. All right, I love you guys. And I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead and I am signing off. All right, I'll see you in the next video.